bottle. My bottle, my bottle. So hello everybody. Thank you for arriving to Brussels despite all the difficulties and the travel nowadays. nowadays. And uh, we are very happy to uh, welcome you here uh, within the project Capacitante. Uh, and we are in the piano fabric in Brussels, which is as you can see. And, uh, for being the leader of this project Capacitate, which is actually uh, from Spain, from the uh, um, This Capacitate project has a good potential, an excellent potential, and actually we would like to think of it in the future, because it's a training for adults and an exchange of good practices among different countries based on the artistic practices of MUSE and for uh, Belgium, for our international Foundation, it, it, we entered in this partnership with the project that we developed for four years now, which is called Homelands, Places of Belongings. And uh, in, in, with the first project, we train artists from um, uh, different place, places of the world coming from the migration, and willing to continue to be an artist even if they are uh, coming from other countries. And, come from very far to find here uh, a job and life. So with this project we wanted really to, to stress the importance of being an artist in all circumstances. I will give the floor to Sergio Magali, who is the artistic director of the Homeland Project and he will explain you more uh, about uh, the project and what is the complementarity with MUSE because uh, MUSE is working with all the artists in the primary schools of Europe and uh, with our homeland project we are working with uh, adults in different contexts but also uh, with different audiences larger than school. So uh, Sergio will uh, explain the, the objectives and the uh, finality of the homeland project and uh, I just wanted to say a special thanks to Juliette because she has been in charge of the raising this workshop. And it has been very difficult because every day everything was changing all the time. COVID, no COVID, uh, all, all kinds of uh, uh, rescheduling constantly. So I think she has learned a lot, but uh, she, she deserves an applause. <laughs> Hello uh, and welcome and good morning everyone. I think most of you or some of you already know what the Homelands Project is about. It has been started a few years ago um, when I stepped uh, in the direction of Marianne and the Foundation to uh, do something that would uh, correspond to their values. And one of the biggest values, and maybe uh, a very important sentence, is giving the voice to the voices. Uh, and as Marianne just said, it is indeed one of the main objectives is to um, their position as artists in society. So not just giving them back some, I mean, a house or a place to stay or a good life, but also to their kids on the So why, what makes them happy, what is very important to them, which is being an artist. And how can we give that back? And that's one aspect. The other aspect, which is also very important to us, is they have a lot to share that we don't know, but the uh, skills, knowledges, that, and cultural backgrounds that is very interesting for, for us to learn from. So actually, we wanted to give that back to our society, but to make it into a kind of an intercultural dialogue, for the simple reason that you have a lot of, still a lot of uh, uh, prejudices, uh, people are still biased when talking with newcomers, when living with newcomers, even in cities like, for instance, Brussels, where we started. Um, but we strongly believe that art, I don't have to explain this, and you all know very well, art is something that can help to make that rich. Why? For different reasons. First of all, because by creating together, you forget after a while who is sitting in front of you. You're just making something that you want to go towards a final goal, a piece of art, a performance, whatever. And in the beginning, maybe, of the process, you're like, okay, but who are you? Can I trust you? But after a while, you don't care anymore. And we work on a rather long period, which is more or less six months. So what we actually do is 
We have one newcomer artist, we put them together with one cultural institution. It can be a school, it can be a cultural venue, it can be, for instance, Piano Fabrique was a partner uh, in the first edition. And then um, they have someone from their staff that is put together with uh, the artist, and together as a binome, or as a trinome, which is a tandem or a trio, they will work with the local community, so with a group of local communities. And they will make a co-creation, an artistic co-creation, for years of six months. Why six months? Because I was saying it's an intercultural dialogue, but you cannot get to know someone if you do it in a weekend or if you do it in two weeks. So we really want, and then yesterday I had a beautiful example again, I was in Namur, because now we are in three cities, actually four, but uh, Namur, Leuven, and then Brussels. And I was in, uh, in Namur uh, with a group of kids also and a, a musician from uh, Senegal and, and you really feel that by the fact that they can work on a long term basis you really take the time to get to know the person and also you are forced to feel the differences and to feel the blockages because there are a lot of blockages because especially also for uh, cultural institutions in the beginning it's like oh lovely and we're welcoming everyone but the moment you start the process, you feel that it's not so easy to be welcoming when you don't understand some parts of the culture, when you don't know how to communicate very well. And so by forcing them in a way to work for a longer time together, you break those boundaries. And now even I had a moment like this when I was talking to the artist, that was like, oh, I would now like to talk with someone else because it's sometimes so difficult. But by just pushing myself through it, I was like, actually, very interesting and this is something that I can learn a lot from. So this is why we work on the longer term, uh, why we work with art, because we believe it's the most powerful tool and a universal language that works with everyone. And also it gives, and that's that's the third aspect maybe uh, that is important, it gives the, and again this I don't have to explain you, you do it every day, is that um, well art is so so vast and it's it, it comprehends so many skills that we can learn as an individual because we work and i guess also you most of the time we work with people that don't often have a musical or an artistic background but we learn how to collaborate yes there was a beautiful example we had a group of kids and i can tell you when i got out of the, the workshop my head was fuck because they were very difficult kids but you could see through the exercise that we did and through the working and through the patience of the artist uh, which by now is extremely loved by the kids that they learned how to collaborate because they understood if I listen to the other kids while I play my djembe I hear, I hear actually that the music is better so maybe if I go outside of the classroom and outside of the context of the workshop I actually also learned that maybe it is better to collaborate in real life. And so these little skills that we learn constantly in art can be applied also in the normal life of everyone now and in the future. And this is actually why we use art because it has so many capacity building capacities um, that we want to use that for the further development uh, of everyone. And well, I'm also very happy that two of the artists are, are here at the project. Um, we have, we have Ali, which is, uh, I'm not saying an exception, but some of the artists of the process, um, we try to give an extra chance in the next edition. So if they're very promising, that they can go to grow further. So Ali was there at Muse, by the way, as a partner two years ago. And now he's in Brussels again, uh, working with the community center, a bit like the Alphabet, but in another township, and doing a great job with uh, senior uh, women. Um, so that's, that's a beautiful project. And then we have uh, Leandro, which you also know from the workshops, which was also a revelation. We also worked last year in uh, Namur with a group of uh, musicians, well, actually amateur musicians in the rock school, and uh, also developed uh, amazingly. And I was, I was very happy to hear. It's actually to be very, very honest with the last thing I say. The art is a good thing, the people is a wonderful thing, but I am already happy because I don't have to try to co creation is a very difficult discipline. I'm already happy that after the project, one of the artists in his new hometown goes to the, to the bakery and sees Marie Jeanne from Namur 
and they recognize each other and they say, hey, but you did something artistic with my grandmother. And with a smile, she gives a bread to, let's say, this for me, I'm not saying this is integration, but this for me is already good. And now you just told me that still now they are exchanging messages that they should have uh, a dinner to all together with, uh, with the group that he left behind already almost a year ago. So this is, this is to me uh, something very, very important for the project. And therefore, that's the last important element. And it's also what you're feeling here now. Co-creation, you know this as well as I do, is not easy. It's a constant development. And therefore, we insist in this project, not only to work with newcomer artists, not only with local artists, but to train. And if my said we train them, then we don't train only the, the artists, but the people that they work with. And we're not talking about bad groups, but we're talking about the, the mediators that we put together with them. And we do that, we start every project, every edition of six months with a week of residencies, very intense, on the spot, in a space, and they don't leave working on what is co-creation, how to work with a group, uh, what you do with uh, specific uh, uh, personalities in the group, what is not co-creation, how do you build the process of six months. And then we have that week and they start the project and then we have still one day in November and one day in January, we just had the last one uh, uh, two weeks ago. Um, and it gives them, well, first of all, skills, but also the confidence that they need. Because for you, locals in your country, it's already difficult to do co-creation with people you don't know. Coming from a completely different cultural background, it's even more difficult. So we don't want to let them alone, leave them alone, so that's why we give this extra training, which I think, but maybe you should say it, guys, is something that helps a lot uh, in the process. So, uh, so yeah, that's a bit what the project is, and I'm very happy that uh, you will a little bit what uh, Leon has been doing in, uh, in his project uh, with the first workshop. Tola, there are no questions more than that I'm shut up. Thank you, Sergio. I wanted to add that so we have Leandro uh, as a delegate in this national training meeting of. Uh, Leandro will lead the workshop and then we will have also participation of Muse Belgium through Catherine who is uh, representing Muse Belgium today and uh, the artist who will, uh, from Muse Belgium who will lead also workshop today and tomorrow I think also. Uh, Patrice, no? Tomorrow. Patrice, tomorrow. 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 tomorrow Patrice will be there. He will lead it tomorrow. Uh, no, I'm just a picture. Ah, okay. okay. And I just wanted also to say that we have a participant of another project uh, that we had, uh, which is called uh, You Create, in which we uh, organize a residence of young music amateurs from different countries of the world. And we have one delegate from Brazil taking part in this uh, workshop, but he was one of the young musicians taking part in our residence, music residence with uh, uh, young musicians from um, all over the world, actually. And uh, also uh, coming from the migration and living in the Pegasic Center, uh, where they are working for being regularized and uh, maybe having a job at the longer term. So we are very happy to welcome you. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you Marianne and Sergio Roberto. So, just a few guidelines for today because we have a very tight schedule and we're also in COVID situation. When you give a presentation, no worries, you can take the mask off. It's easier to talk and so that people can understand. If you have a workshop that is active and you have to move around, please uh, put your mask on. Also, in Piano Fabrique, when you go to the restroom outside, mask on also, that's required. Uh, concerning the workshop, so you each have the ones who give one. One hour, I have a little post-it color to say if you have five minutes left so that you can know when you have to wrap it up. <laughs> and uh, there's been a, f a few changes in the agenda since I sent you and since I printed the, the folders. 
So um, the first one is going to be by Leandro, who is so, as mentioned, from the Homelands project. And then afterwards, we'll have two workshops uh, given through Zoom. So please be patient with Zoom also. <laughs> and thank you all for coming. <laughs>